ice drill. Cameras and video camera, trail camera, fish finder. What could these possibly become or have to do with my multi tool? Well, stay tuned. I'm about to show you. Okay, I think we're going to take just a moment to start this off. Kind of fooled you, didn't I? No, it's not a cane, although it could be. This is going to be the video on the multi-tool. And just before we get started, I'm going to give you just a little bit of a hint as to how these things happen, how, how I get these ideas. They just kind of pop into my brain and it all swirls around. So I'll tell you a little bit for a moment how my head works. Uh, Actually, maybe you better take any kids out of the room because it ain't pretty. Initially, my first thought was for the hunting season this year, uh, I wanted to make sure I had some good film for the video. Um, nothing too intense, but, but I wanted decent footage. So I thought if I had a mount on a tree that could come down the trunk and stick out like an arm, maybe that would swivel a little bit, a jointed arm, then I could mount a camera out, away from me several feet, aiming towards me, uh, as well as a camera with me looking down into the action. And then I could just splice and edit the bits and pieces together to make it look like something. So that's where it all started, just something simple like that. But it never stays simple like that. So then I thought, well, if I was to make a couple extra joints, you know, I could move it around and have a little bit more flexibility. And then I got thinking, well, there's more things that this could do, and it started to become the multi-tool. So I don't want to give the whole thing away, but that progression is kind of the way my head usually works. Uh, I start off with a project, probably a relatively simple one, and then things get all kind of sideways and, and it gets nuts from there. So I'm going to move the camera back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. And let's see what this thing can do, see what you think. Doesn't look like much, does it? Kind of lunch bag let down. Let me fix up the camera here, and then we'll be back, and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so we started off, as I was saying, as just something to use in a tree uh, for a little bit of videoing when I'm on the hunt. So this portion here would hook, would be up against the tree trunk. This little uh, tab up here, which flexes, uh, but can also be tightened, would have the strap, uh, like a ratchet strap, around the trunk of the tree, ratcheted tight, and that would hold this rigid. The, uh, the one piece on this that's not flexible is this arm here to the connection here. This piece of aluminum tubing was originally going to be bolted to this piece of aluminum tubing as everything else is and I realized that that's probably not very sturdy. There's, there's more chance that with the weight uh, that that would move a little bit. So I welded here, I welded this piece of aluminum to this piece of aluminum just for security. I don't want getting kind of bit up with bugs here. I didn't want any chance of that uh, I didn't want it to move, I also didn't want it to come apart with, you know, when you got a camera on the end here. I started out to paint it uh, before I showed it to you, and I thought maybe that wasn't the best idea because the dullness of the paint doesn't allow it to show up some of the configurations that I've made here as easily just for the sake of the camera. So I decided to show it to you like this, and then I'll paint the rest of it when I get it done. So here we are, we've actually got, uh, uh, you know, what could be used as a cane or a walking stick this way. I left a little point here on the back so that when I do mount it to a tree, that will catch into the bark a little bit and, and help keep it stable. This part here uh, will also stabilize it and keep the, uh, 
the uh, strap from slipping up if, if that was a problem. The other advantage to this, and this can actually be removed from here and mounted underneath just as easily so that it sticks down further. And this makes, uh, as you extend the length of it, a dandy uh, boat hook or something if you're trying to hook something out of the back of your pickup truck and you need to reach up into the box and slide it back. And this just helps give it a little bit more grip. So this was the original length. And then I got thinking, well, you know, if I had another arm on it, I would have a little more flexibility and a little bit better ability to position the camera. So then I thought, okay, I'll put one more arm on. We'll just pretend that's not there for the moment. And then if I put the camera away from me, and, you know, the trees are never in the right spot, so I may have to bolt, uh, strap it to the tree in an angle that's not exactly right. I can use this, mount the camera out here at this end, and use this to get a bit more flexibility. Well then, why not have more flexibility? So I move this second arm, so now I can come out this way, but I can also go up and down this way. So now I have even more ability to position the camera where I want it. And then this little one here gives me even more gain. So I've got kind of the mechanical arm thing going on here. Uh, I can get all kinds of different positions, angles, get this paint pointing just about anywhere I want it to point, all by bouncing it to the tree and then swiveling these things around to make it work wherever I want it. Also in between the, the washer and the wing nut, I've got a little rubber washer. That little rubber washer just adds a little bit of friction in there to help keep these things uh, more stable. Those little rubber washers are just little squares that I cut out from an inner tube. But just a, a kid's bicycle inner tube, you know, they don't take up any room. Keep them around. They're all sorts of handiness. You can make something like this. You can make little gaskets. They're, they're handy for all kinds of things. So here we now have extended the length. And as you can see here, I hope you can see this, I've, I've put holes all the way up. And then on the other side, I've cross drilled it all the way up. So I've got a hole here and here and here and here and so on. So I can move these arms up and down to get any combination of length that I want. And so there we go. We've got it mounted like this. I've also cross drilled every joint at every end. So if this piece, which is now this direction, I can move it like this, I can move it like this. If I wanted more stability and, and less chance of it moving, I could take this and mount it that way so that it's, it's a straight line and I would have a much more rigid connection if there was any weight out here beyond something like a tiny camera. And that still gives me an ability to turn it. So, the other thing I was thinking, this keeps going, you know, I, I keep thinking I've got the, you know, I've got, well that's a pretty good idea. And then four more things come into my head and it all starts to swirl around. I made up this little bracket. I don't know if you can see that, if I can get up here. This piece here, right here, is the little bracket that came with the Humminbird fish finder. And it's exactly as it was, I haven't modified the bracket any. It's got little serrations on here, and the bolt through, and the transducer fits in here, and you tighten up the bolt, and these little serrations allow you to tip or change the pitch of the transducer uh, if you want to, when it's mounted to your boat. So, I probably won't use that, but that's the way it came, so that's the way it is. My thought was, I've got a configuration this way and this way. So, if I mount this transducer on the end like this, let's say like that, I can now, uh, I can adjust this for length, of course, because I'm probably... Uh, you know going to be way too deep at this point, but I can mount this transducer bracket here and Then I can hang this portion of it Over the side of the boat and now I've got my fish finder working or my depth finder working off the side of the boat and I can adjust the depth that can fit any boat as long as, as long as it's not you know taller than this is almost five feet long So it's not I mean, it's not short by any means 
So I can now set this on the side of the boat. Now I very rarely use my fish finders, depth finders, at any speed. I, I might possibly do a slow troll with it. Mostly I'm either not moving or maybe just drifting. So I don't have to worry too much about that. You could you can find different ways of clamping that on if you're concerned about you know having it fall over or whatever. But you've also got the line from the transducer coming up. So now I can mount my fish finder uh, and not have to have it constantly out on the boat where it might be you know it might be at risk. You never know. Somebody might just see it in a parking lot somewhere and decide that they want to have it. So there we go. The other thing is. Uh, as a tripod, I don't really want to carry both. This is actually lighter than the tripod I'm going to show you here shortly. So now, I have a tripod. Now this tripod is infinitely adjustable. I can mount it like that. I can change the mounts on it. I can take this one. Here, let's do this now. The rubber washer I made out of the I just punched a hole through here with the, you know, my leather punch. So now I configure this to being a tripod this way. And I can use it for a lot of different things this way. And we'll go through that here in a moment. So I'll just put that wing nut back on. Get that a little bit snugged up just so that it'll... And you can snug these up pretty good, with, you know, with a wing nut on them. You don't have to have this thing... I mean, you're not going to put anything terribly heavy on it. We'll get that out of the way for the moment. So now, I have a tripod. So now, everything on this is quarter 20 bolts. And the reason I did that... Uh, because I didn't really need anything bigger, but also the camera mounts on almost every camera I've ever seen are quarter 20 volts. So this could now come off and a camera could mount up here and I've got a tripod. So I don't have to carry this and the tripod both unless in some instance I might want some much more, uh, you know, in-depth or uh, extravagant whatever type of setup where I'm going to use a number of cameras that's probably not ever going to happen for me, but you know, whatever. You've got it. So now I've got the ability to use it with my depth sounder off my boat as a tripod. Also, I can I could leave this on like this and keep this down. And now I have a walking stick. Uh, you could even use it shortly as a cane. That's about the right height as a cane. You could also extend it and tighten it up. And you've got a walking stick. Um, you know, you might want to be able to check the depth either of the snow or of the water and that's always a handy thing to have. I could take this piece, put it back on the end, make it taller, and now I've got a shooting stand. I can put a little Y-shaped piece up here. I've either got a monopod for the camera or I can split the bottom and have two points and still, by using this extension, I can still have it up pretty tall. I can have a two-point brace and I can use that for my camera. I could also put the little V-mount on here and use it as a shooting stick. So it does that as well. So that's a good thing. So then as I was working on the bracket, um, this is the transducer for the, for the Humminbird fish finder that I got in the last video. So as you can see, it just would mount like that. The tipping ability is, is like this, but like I said, I probably won't worry about that because I've got much more flexibility with this, but that's how it goes together. So what I can do is I could mount this, let's move that up there, on here, I've got a hole, so I can mount it this way or this way. So I'm going to mount it this way because I've got cross drills on both sides, and that puts a little lip on there. So when I go ice fishing, when I drill a hole down, now the holes that I drill up here, you know, they're 40 inches of ice a lot of times, I can reach this down the hole, I can catch, lift it back up and catch the bottom of the, of the ice on the edge of the hole because you don't want this, <laughs> you don't want this in the middle of the hole tangling up your line. So I can pull it to the side of the hole, lift it up a little bit, move this out into the slush or snow or whatever's on the side and again, I've got lots of room to position this at whatever depth I need, like I said I probably need about 40 inches. And now I can brace this into the side of the hole right on the edge and not catch the line as badly. Um, it's still going to be sticking out there, so you're still risking that. But chances are, like I said, you know, the same with, with the boat. I'm probably just going to use it to find structure, find the depth that I'm working at, and then pull it out and drop my line down.
of the less, I have the option to use that. So now this is portable. All I have to do is mount my fish finder in a small box with the battery. I can transport it to the boat. Uh, I can put it in a canoe for that matter. I can transport it to anybody's boat if I'm going out. And now I can use it when I go ice fishing. All just because of this little thing here. It doesn't look like much, but it's got all kinds of angles. Now, because it's square aluminum tubing, there's an end here, or you could mount it on one of these pieces if you don't want to have it on a permanent end. I could make a plug for there, probably out of aluminum, but could be out of wood, could be out of anything, and thread it, drill it and thread it, and now I can thread in any kind of an attachment that I want. Could be anything. How many attachments you could come up with? Um, you, know, you could put a spear point in there. I, I don't really know why, but you could. Um, that frog gig, that could be mounted in here. Uh, you know, the list is endless. There's all kinds of things that you could mount in here. And because it's cross-drilled on every position, it, you know, you, can, you could add one here and another one right beside it. it. It really doesn't matter. So, as I use this, and I've just pretty much completed it, I had to, uh, the biggest delay on this whole thing was, was getting the bolts, uh, the quarter 20 bolts, long enough to go through two pieces of one inch aluminum and a little bit to spare. I'm about 30 miles from the nearest town and I only go to that town, I'm not a town person, so I only go to that town about once every two or three weeks when I really need to get some things. So I'm not going to drive a 60 kilometer or 60 mile, 100 kilometer roughly round trip just to get a few bolts. So that's what took so long to, to get this video together. So I'm going to take this other little camera that I've got here and I'm going to show you, it's just, there's no screen on this, it's a point and shoot. Um, and I'm going to turn that camera off and put this camera on and show you a little bit about the tripod and the other figuration, configuration that I'm using that could also be part of this system here. So hang in there and I'll see what we can do. That tripod very old it's probably 40 years old that tripod I've hauled that around for a long long time um, not to make videos but just for whatever it weighs more than the multi-tool here so there's no real need to carry both unless I'm really setting up some kind of an elaborate system with two or three cameras uh, and then of course I will probably be using some kind of transportation like the four-wheeler or whatever this bracket here that I made which bolts onto the top of the, the, the stand here, will also, of course, because it's a quarter 20 thread, the same as everything else, will also attach to the top of the multi-tool. The beauty of what this does is that it allows me to set up a microphone here, and then I made a little arm right there, and I put a twist in it. That twist just gives it a little bit more rigidity, a little bit more stiffness, and, and you won't get a much bounce. Not that it's likely going to be in a place where it'll bounce, but why not? This I made is like a sound parabola. Now, I didn't, I didn't leave the whole parabola in there, but I've been, you know, it's quite windy here, as you've always noticed. I'm sure um, most of my videos, I'm fighting with the wind. But also, this can help make it a bit more directional so that I'm not picking up sound uh, you know, auxiliary sounds from way out off in the distance that maybe I don't really want to have in there. And my editing skills, as well as my editing program, are not that sophisticated, so I can't separate my soundtrack or whatever and, and change all that. That's just not something that, uh, that I've been able to do yet. This piece here, this, this actually just attaches right here, so that could actually come off as well, but it just goes on this arm. This piece here is a piece of the gray sewer pipe. Just the, just the standard four inch um, ABS or whatever the heck it is, sewer pipe. And that stuff is, is like common man's Kydex. It's thermoplastic, same as Kydex. Now Kydex is a much finer, much more refined. Uh, it comes in a lot of colors. It's very pretty. It's very finer texture. So, you know, it's just a whole lot nicer to work with and it makes a nice finished product. But, you know, it's also more expensive. And for me way up here, just getting anything shipped up here, it's almost worth more to ship it than it's worth to buy it. So, you know, not a good thing. So this is just a piece of that pipe. And I just, it was completely round like this, but it was only four inches, just a four inch pipe. So I split it and then I warmed it up. Now what I did is I bought a toaster oven at a yard sale for three bucks or something, which I bought two of them. And I keep it in my garage 
and I use that for all kinds of stuff that I don't necessarily want to do in the house. Uh, it goes up to 500 degrees, so after I've forged the knife or whatever it is, uh, and I've hardened it, and I want to temper it down to a, uh, you know, a less brittle state, I can do it in my oven at 500 degrees for a couple hours, and it'll bring the rock well down to a level where it's going to be quite solid, but not nearly as brittle as if it was just quenched. But in this case, you can make anything with it. I've made knife sheaths with it. Uh, as you can see, I've made a sound catcher parabola thing with it. So I'll do a video on that because that stuff's like gold. It, it's as handy as anything. So that's pretty much how my multi-tool works, what it does, what it can do. Um, I'm sure I'll think of a hundred other things as I go along. So there it is. And I want to thank you for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I love the comments. I really appreciate the comments. I like to hear from you. I like to hear what you think about the videos. In this case, I'd be curious to see if we have uh, anybody with a, with, a, with a kind of a clever name for it. Um, everybody have a great week. Have a safe week. And I'll be looking forward to hearing from you. And I'll be looking forward to seeing you the next time. Take it easy, everyone. Have a great one.